Today, we're going to talk about the metaverse. Ever since CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced Facebook's name would be changing to Meta, I began thinking what it would mean for legacy entertainment. Surely, the media landscape as we know it has been changing rapidly already in order to accommodate a world monopolized by devices where you can pull just about anything up on demand. For a while, streaming was a side business. The cash cow was the box office. Of course, looking at things like Spider-Man No Way Home, it most certainly still is. But the scale is no doubt shifting, and the sentiments of entertainment companies are changing rapidly. A great illustration of this is Disney, who once licensed movies and even intellectual property to the likes of Netflix. This brought in an additional revenue stream Disney had to do little in order to earn. Now Disney has done away with that easy money and built from the ground up their own dedicated subscription-based streaming platform. Once Disney Plus hit the scene, it seems like every other studio, every other network left to do so began adapting as well, trying to come up with their own subscription-based digital platform where you can access content content instantly on any device. Curiously, despite the common sentiment that these services are smashing successes, Disney Plus is still far from turning a profit. So why is there so much excitement from investors and executives around this product? It's not about what Disney Plus is doing now, it's about what it can be in the future. And that's why companies are continuing to sink even bigger, more ludicrous amounts of money into their streaming services. Disney is future-proofing their product, making a bet on an age where the virtual reigns supreme at levels we haven't even reached yet. During the development of the Disney Plus service, Disney CEO was adamant that it would not interfere with the traditional release schedule for feature films, not challenging the dominance of the physical movie-going experience. Then came the events of 2020, where we saw new movies you used to have to go watch physically adapt to a digital environment with paid premiere access. Thankfully, we are seeing the physical movie-going experience return in some capacity as of late, but it would be extremely wishful thinking to act as though the genie can be put back in the bottle. The means by which consumers expect to watch movies has changed, and there's no doubt we can expect many more direct-to-consumer movie releases in the near future. So while in the avenues of film and television, we are seeing a great shift towards this digital future, there is another extremely popular form of legacy entertainment I cover on this YouTube channel, which seems much more inflexible entering this brave new world. That is theme parks. Specifically, in my case, I cover Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. When Walt Disney was creating Disneyland in the 1950s, the idea at its core was taking the amusement park and going a step further with the immersion, the theming, hence a theme park. A permanent Hollywood set that would immerse you in the make believe leave, not just on a short attraction, but even waiting in line, walking around the park, grabbing a bite to eat. If the world embraces the metaverse, in some cases a virtual reality and in other cases an augmented reality experience blending into reality itself, how viable is a place like Walt Disney World, which at its core is an earlier version of the same concept? We've had video games for a while, which have never reached a level that rivals the unique in-person experience theme parks offer. The metaverse is different. In the way Walt took the level of immersion from amusement park to theme park, the metaverse will be poised to make reality itself a theme park, immersing the consumer in a world that is more immersive in a much more frictionless way. No need for the guests to pay $5,000, buy plane tickets, bus tickets, make park reservations, book a hotel, purchase ride passes. An endless world of immersion in digital products is right at their fingertips. Also think about it from Disney's end. Imagine the Disney parks experiences and product segment of the company no longer being something about physical parks and physical products, instead virtual ones. No billion dollars in five years needed to build a new land to attract some guests. No need to continue paying for the most labor-intensive entertainment experience that exists on the planet. No need to worry about maintaining or trying to keep welded together 50-year-old hunks of steel. In the metaverse, the limitations of the physical no longer apply, and the margins Disney would make would be significantly greater while also attracting many more consumers than the physical Disney parks could ever hope to reach. Similar to how early in the streaming game Disney licensed things out to Netflix, now Disney has begun licensing their characters to NFT maker VV Digital Collectibles, who sells virtual Disney character figures. Is it much of a stretch to think that one day Disney themselves may be the ones selling limited edition blockchain verified digital products like this for thousands of dollars people will gladly pay for and proudly display in their corner of the metaverse to flex on their friends? I think it's a near certainty something like that will become a reality in the near future. 
Virtual products that cost next to nothing to make, don't require any shipping, being sold for thousands, the value in it for the consumer being you are one of the select few to have whatever that certain item is, and therefore you are one of those select few who's able to show it off in this virtual world that is blending into reality itself. The metaverse is still quite mysterious in terms of what threat it'll actually pose to physical themed experiences like Walt Disney World. Nevertheless, I don't think it's in any way hyperbolic to say it could pose one. The best thing that the Disney parks have always had going for them are the rides, the attractions, the details in them. Not only do they create for a very unique experience you can't find elsewhere, but also one with such attention to detail, people want to ride the rides again and again, therefore becoming willing to jump through all of those hoops to go again and again. But with time and God forbid acceptance by the general population, I'm sure the architects of this new virtual reality will be able to rival the kind of sensations theme parks offer. I hope they fail because not only is the metaverse much less impressive by virtue of how easy it is to create something digitally as opposed to the theme parks which took the collective knowledge, ingenuity, sweat and blood and financial risk of generations of visionaries, but also because of how inherently evil this future would be. Headsets continuously recording everybody, removing people's connection to the tangible in favor of something that is fake. I think lately if you look closely at the words and actions of executives that are looking into the future of entertainment, you will see that they are much more looking towards and preparing for this virtual future we are calling the metaverse, showing much more interest in that versus new physical theme parks and expanding current ones which cost them an arm and a leg to operate, pose shutting down and becoming money drains in the event of any further public health emergencies and become something not worthwhile when stacked up against the virtually limitless mountain of riches set to be made selling digital products in a virtual park in a virtual reality that could be not so far down the road. As I said, I hope this doesn't happen. Nothing virtual will ever stack up to the parks in my opinion. And theme parks are still being built. We're going to be getting a new park in Orlando Epic Universe, uh, the Universal's building, so that's very exciting. My fear is even if the metaverse doesn't end up stacking up to something like a physical theme park, it only has to approximate it. Disney only has to approximate such a place inside the metaverse. And then the difference in accessibility between the two for the consumer, as well as the profit potential and the lack of overhead on the side of the corporations may replace much the need for the physical entertainment we have available to us today at a mass scale. If this future I'm painting seems far-fetched, you'd be hard pressed to argue that it's not the future our techno overlords are trying to make happen. What can you do? I've been spending more time off of social media, doing some hiking, taking some film photos. Watch a sunrise. Support your local entertainment venues, ones that you like. Take your loved ones on a trip somewhere exceptional. Even if it might be a pain or a hassle at certain points along the way, when you do have that sense of fulfillment and enjoyment from interacting with the physical around you, you can take solace in knowing that it happened, that it's real. Hopefully, it always will be. Thanks for watching. Have a magical day.